Hi, this is Jose Abdel Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us once again, Dave Birmingham, Director of Customer Success at Sios Technology. Dave, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, it's glad, I'm glad to be here again. Thanks for having me. And today we are going to talk about high availability in state and local governments and education, or as we call it, SLED. Uh, if I ask you, if you look at state and local governments and education first of all they do a lot of different things but we have very specific focus in today's discussion talk a bit about what systems or services they use that are kind of considered critical to the operations of these organizations yeah so as you can imagine you know you think about state and local government and it's a huge organization it's probably the biggest organization there could be there's it encompasses a lot of different systems, a lot of different departments and, and so forth. So we're going to kind of focus on some of the higher, you know, departments that are maybe, you know, business critical, right? So we think about state and local government, and I think about paying my taxes, 90% of my taxes go to support our education system. So the local school district uh, and within that school district is obviously very important that they are able to operate efficiently. So they have, you know, to maintain their student information systems that manage the grades, enrollments, and transcripts, and so forth. But more often than that, especially with COVID, you see people going to online, uh, you know, online classrooms. So there's learning management systems. I'm taking some classes this semester where we're using something like Canvas or Blackboard or those types of systems where if that system's offline, no one's learning. Class is not in session. So you can imagine that those are business critical systems. But beyond the school system, I think about some other important functions of my state uh, government or my local government. If I pick up the phone and I call 911, I expect someone to be on the other end to take that call, not only to be able to take the call, but to be able to efficiently dispatch uh, services to for whatever emergency it might be ambulance police or whatnot so the communication and collaboration tools that are used by those emergency services are probably the most business critical mission critical uh, systems that a local government relies on um, beyond that think about like any other corporation is financial management systems you go to pay your taxes uh, they, you know, all those systems need to be online. So the budgeting, accounting, procurement, taxes. Um, I was here in our local town. We just moved our headquarters uh, from our local government from one building to the other. And I think there was a miss. There was a miscue in um, mail delivery, and people were paying their taxes being delivered to the wrong building, and a lot of people got late with notices. So that doesn't even have anything to do with necessarily um, you know computer systems being online but that's all part of business continuity disaster recovery is making sure all those systems flow getting getting the mail to go to the right location is all part of that business critical process that, that has to happen so you need to take into consideration all those you know all those systems that make our local government function and and you know make sure that they are highly available now when i look at you you know you do know hey which other services which actually are considered the critical and need high availability how do state and local governments and education uh, you know they determine that hey, these are the systems which are critical and if they need high availability for these systems and services it's really no different than any you know any enterprise where they have to take a look at each and every system or service that they deliver and determine you know what happens if this service is offline the system fails uh what are the ramifications and obviously we talked about you know 911 that's you know life life or death right you you don't want to drop a phone call when someone needs an ambulance uh, and so forth so they really look at a couple things right the, the dependency on a system or service if there's some things that you know could be offline for a few hours and really no one would know the difference how dependent are you uh, what is your tolerance for downtime 
So figure that out. How often is a system use, is used? If you have, you know, an accounting system that is just used, you know, weekly, you know, then obviously high availability might not be, you know, it's not first in line to, you know, receive, high, you know, high availability. Uh, the, again, the impact of the outage systems offline, what's the impact? Uh, what's, you know, the disruption? What does it do? Is it a significant negative impact? Uh, again, back to education system. If my Canvas or Blackboard or whatever online learning system I'm using is that offline, what does that mean? Am I, you know, I, I, I'm, people pay tuition to attend my university and they're not getting services. That's not that impacts today's students, but also people looking to maybe choose your, you know, your your college in the future if you're not, you know. If you have bad, you know, bad press, that might impact um, future students as well. And then the overall cost, right? So there's you can't put a price on, you know, the 911 service, right? It's life or death. But there's other services that, yeah, might be an inconvenience, but what's the overall cost of that outage? And you you want to minimize the the cost of downtime. So you know that always will back into the decision uh, of whether or not to implement high availability for that system. So a, a combination of all those, the impact, the cost, the frequency of use, the dependence on the system, they all come together to help determine whether that system needs to be highly available or, or not. Can you talk about how do they choose, uh, you know, once again, you did touch upon that, but a specific solution which makes more sense in their case. You know, once they determine a system needs to be highly available, and they're, they're trying to figure out what does that mean, what does that look like, they have to look at a, a couple factors. Uh, of course, the cost, right? So an HA solution needs to be cost effective. Um, you know, you can't spend a million dollars to save a hundred thousand dollars. That doesn't make sense. But, um, you know, so cost obviously is, is, you know, probably, you know, one of the most important factors, but there's other factors as well. Of course, why are you buying high availability is for um, redundancy. So is it reliable? Is it going to ensure that you have the availability that you're, you're hoping to achieve? So whatever system you're implementing has to make sure you have the redundancy uh, high availability should detect failures, uh, perform recovery actions, all you know automatically to help you achieve, which is commonly uh, called you know high availability starts at 99.99% of availability, which is roughly less than five minutes of downtime per month. So you got to look at the redundancy, and of course performance you have to maintain just because the system is available if it's not performing up to specs then that's not really considered available. So the HA solution should be able to maintain high levels of performance, even under heavy workloads uh, or during failover scenarios. And I think about the school, um, you know, especially college where one week a year or one week a semester, students are picking their classes, they're online enrolling. So that system needs to be able to perform at that peak uh, you know, that time. So that leads to scalability, right? So the system needs to be scalable and, you know, being highly available when no one's using it is one thing, but being highly available and scalable and performant during that peak period of time is critical. So you need to make sure that performance is maintained and that the solution is scalable. And then finally, it needs to be able to integrate with the existing systems and infrastructure. So you look at 911 and um, the CAD systems, you know, call center, they, they, you know, whatever solution you have needs to work with the solution you have in place. So that's obviously a very important consideration as well. It needs to be able to integrate seamlessly with uh, with whatever solution that you're currently using. Can you share uh, some use cases, you know, or the kind of customers that you have worked with in this sector? To come to mind, you know, we, we do a lot of work with education systems. And I was kind of referencing one of the, um, 
one of the universities that we've done business with is, you know, that student enrollment system where, again, going back to their concern was, you know, once a semester, everyone's going for classes, they, they can't afford to have downtime. So they were looking for a solution that would eliminate the possibility of downtime during that enrollment period. So it was, for, it was uh, backend um, by SQL Server. So they needed to implement a cluster of, you know, SQL Server fill or cluster instance, but they wanted to have redundancy across data centers. So not, not a single data center. They want to be able to withstand a failure of an entire data center. So they were implementing a sandless cluster solution with Cyrus Data Keeper to span data centers. So that high availability, not not only at the application level, at the server level, but also at the entire data center center level. Um, the other solution that uh, I've worked with is in that 911 space, so the call uh, call center and um, CAD system. So uh, we work with an integrator that um, deploys CAD uh, systems, and specifically this integrator, they have a very um, it's a um, unique or differentiated solution that allows different townships to communicate with each other. If you imagine you your local town, you have a 911 dispatch, you have a local police force, you have a local fire force. Um, however, you have you know you're only limited to the number of um, you know police cars or, or fire trucks that you have in your in, you know uh, on your payroll but what happens if you have multiple disasters you commonly call upon the township next to you to assist and that can sometimes be challenging because you don't have insight into what you know what services are currently available over there so they have a solution as a cad to cad type solution where you have your call um, center can actually see their call center so you have this partnership and so you can actually dispatch um, police or fire or rescue from um, partner townships using this cad to cad system and of course that system needs to be highly available so we've worked with this integrator to assure that their cad to cad system uh, is is online obviously this is one of the probably most business critical solutions that any local government could want to ensure is highly available is this call center or even this CAD to CAD type system. So we have some uh, you know, public case studies on that specific solution. But again, that's using uh, our sandless clustering solution that, um, that allows you to build those clusters that span data centers like that. Dave, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this topic. And as well, I look forward to our next discussion. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Bye.